I'm going to share with you now some of my philosophy and a little more of a historical background of how this photograph was made, in this case the Mount Wilson telescope. What we're looking at here is the stitched together view of the inside of the scope itself. This is one of the shots I've created when I'm doing some research. The background for this scope is that this was built around 1908 and when they actually built the scope, the mountain roads going up to the facility itself were too narrow for the trucks of those days. Having a much wider turning radius, they couldn't use them. So they had to actually use mules to take all this equipment from the valley floor nine and a half miles away and they wound up taking over 21 tons of equipment up to the facility in order to construct it from scratch in those days. It's a huge undertaking. Dave Jurasevich, the superintendent of the facility, explains that scientifically the scope is no longer functioning as a cutting-edge tool for science and scientists regard it more as a cathedral of science now more so than a um, somewhat past its prime tool of science for the you know astronomical community. What you're looking at here were all the shots of us putting this together and composing it as much as we could. We wound up taking a lot of equipment from the basement bringing it up to create the actual composition. These are the rough snapshots from the uh, <clears throat> scene itself. What I'm doing is capturing different views and lighting different components to have this sort of palette as I've explained before. The streak of light you're looking at right now is the actual head of my flashlight being exposed over about a 10 seconds um, time-lapse photograph. I'm also exposing for the different lights, ambient lights, and overall lights. I also exposed out the iris, I think they call that, the open slit where they can view the skies from the inside of the dome. And this is the final composition itself. This is basically all the elements put together, composed as nice as I can get it in a relatively short time frame, and just flood lit, just so I get a sense of where everything belongs. What I'm doing now is composing the shot back together with multiple layers. This has probably got 10 or so different photographs we're looking at combined together as it is right now. As I go building up layer upon layer, the shot gets fuller and fuller. I generally work from the primary subject outwards and downwards to help understand where I'm at each time I'm working. You can see some of those pieces of equipment we brought from the basement floor are lying on the ground right there. There's also catwalks and platforms in the whole dome itself I'm trying to light, and it gets a little confusing sometimes to keep a handle on it. You can see the first person showing up in the photograph is Dave Drasevich himself. He's the superintendent of the facility. It's kind of interesting to light the dome itself. In this case, it's such a big, giant, you know, inside of a bubble. It's kind of hard to get a sense of that roundness and fullness. So even though we're basically looking at everything sort of flat on, I'm trying to cross-light it to help get a sense of depth and texture. Later on, of course, I'm adding the red lights you had seen earlier, separate exposures. And then I'm adding the two last gentlemen, Ed and Sean. They were also volunteers who helped me put the photograph together. Finally, with the inclusion of the outside sky, the sky itself was photographed maybe just an hour after sunset with a long exposure. You can see the stars streaking because it is about a minute exposure. And this is pretty much the final photograph. It's neat to see that photograph compared to this photograph. This is the same composition exactly except for the open window where the scope looks through. It's the same shot here to here. It's just the lighting that changes everything. I think it's so neat. And that's how the photograph came to be.